I've been working in conservation for the last 10 years with innovative scientists from around the world to bring biotechnology to wildlife conservation. We need to solve the escalating threats to biodiversity from climate change, habitat loss, fragmented populations, and wildlife diseases. These are the unintended consequences of the human-dominated time we live in, a time when we need new tools for the conservation toolbox. And with genetic rescue, we can actually help stop more species from crossing the line into extinction. But even these technologies are not widely adopted by conservation. We hope to change that. Emerging technologies of genetic engineering hold the promise of helping species adapt to climate change, solve wildlife disease problems, and even help solve invasive species problems. But very often, these technologies never get out of the starting gate because the fear of unintended consequences absolutely stymies even the most basic uh, innovation at the get-go. Probably there's no more urgent need to overcome some of this reluctance to use these technologies than in the case of coral. There is hope. Scientists around the world are utilizing new technologies to cryopreserve even living coral fragments that can be transplanted onto artificial reefs. This is just the beginning of some of the work that is pioneering and can happen. Now, you may be looking at that and saying, genetically modified corals? What about the unintended consequences? This question comes up so often with any innovation in science. We decided to actually identify just how often, do you, when humans intervene, do they cause the disasters that people fear so much? And sadly, we never hear about the success stories. So the next time you hear about some bold new idea, I hope you'll think first about the intended consequences. We don't have the luxury of time to stand by and wait and see what happens. For the thousands of plants and animals at risk today, we know that doing nothing can cause extinction. Instead, let's carefully and intentionally plan with all the tools in the toolbox to achieve and create the future we want and not overreact to a future that we fear. Ryan, these, these same technologies, synthetic biology, so like in principle, they allow actual de-extinction, species that the planet hasn't seen for years. In principle, we could bring back. Are there any projects you're involved with that, that excite you or possibly terrify you, but that, that we, where we could see such de-extinction taking place? Yeah, anyway. well, um, you know, we are working on everything from the woolly mammoth, as some of you may know, to the passenger pigeon. But the, to me, the most motivating part of these technologies is de-extinction is just a big, hairy, audacious goal. And if we get there, it'll be grand. But getting there, all of these genetic rescue tools and technology can be applied to save endangered species. It's all a fundamental toolkit that's essential. Well, Ryan, you're, you're an extremely compelling and persuasive and um, trustworthy voice, I would say, in the well, soul space. So thank you so much for the work you're doing, for, for sharing this. <laughs>